Welcome back to Everyday Garage. Finally, we are back working here on the Fiero, and today we are going to be stripping the engine down completely down to the pistons. That's the hopes anyway. I've got it on my new engine stand here. Unfortunately, I was only able to get two bolts in. Um, I know this isn't advisable by any means, but it seems to be holding just fine. Next time, I will be bringing longer bolts. That's the reason I couldn't get these through on the arms. So next time, I will definitely be bringing longer bolts so I can secure this a little bit better for the reassembly. I'm just going to start by taking off every little part that I can. So first things first, I'm going to start on this upper area here, trying to get the cover off off here and then move on down to the valve covers and just anything along the way that I can get off. Let's get started. So we just ran into our first little problem. I was trying to take off one of these heads here as you probably just saw in the time lapse and putting a lot of force on it did not work because it just sheared right off into the cover, which is fantastic. So I gotta drill that out and get that out at some point, but I'm gonna keep going. All right, I got all of these top cover plate bolts off. Now I'm going to have to remove this piece here as well as some of the vacuum lines in the front and probably I'm missing a couple things like even there's a wire right there. As I'm removing things, I'm doing the best I can to put them in little Ziplocs and label them and label everything that I can. Hopefully so I'll be able to put this back without a problem. I'm sure there'll be plenty of problems though. Also, as a bit of advice, this is the only video on YouTube breaking down this engine and soon there will be a part two where I'll be rebuilding the engine. As far as I can tell, this is the only on this exact engine. So take my words with a grain of salt and watch the full video because at the end, if I had any problems, I will share those. But I am definitely not a professional engine rebuilder, so just do be advised and watch this as a learning experience to learn from my possible mistakes. Anyway, let's continue on. Okay, so we got the top cover plate off, as you can see right there. Anyway, let's continue on, and uh, I'm gonna try and get the whole wiring loom off so I can see what needs to come off now. All the fuel rails and lines and hoses, uh, that's probably what I'm gonna target next, so I can see where I can access the rest of the bolts to get everything apart. Okay, so I think I got the entire wiring loom unplugged. It is a little stuck over in this area and under the alternator here, it's stuck in between the bracket. So I guess the next step before I can fully take off the wiring loom is to get the mounting surface for the alternator and this top piece off completely so I can be able to slip out this piece of the wiring right along here. So I'm gonna start working on those two pieces. Looks like it won't be that hard and we should be able to get the wiring loom out. All right, I went ahead and took off those two front brackets that hold on the front accessories, and now we've got a lot more room to work with in here to get the heads off and the valve covers off. So I wanna take the distributor off in the back here, so I'm gonna work on those next steps right now.
Okay, so I just got the water pumped off and I'm very glad I'm replacing this because look how nasty that is. And look at the pump itself, completely filled up with rust. It does appear to still be functioning. At the very least, I'll be cleaning it very, very good before I put it back on. Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> Now that I've got most of the accessories and everything else off, all that we have left is, for the most part, the block, the heads, and the intake manifold. So I'm starting with the intake manifold, and then we'll move on to the heads to get everything off. And then we should be able to see what those pistons look like. I'm kind of excited. All right, let's get started. I was able to get the intake off as you can see right there and that came off pretty easy and now we have access to the inside of the motor we can see the camshaft and everything but unfortunately I did run into a problem these bolts along here are super super tight and they're 15 millimeter unfortunately all I have is 15 millimeter wrenches and my little set here only goes up to 13 so we've got a little bit of a problem there anyway I'm going to flip over the motor now and try and go ahead and take off the oil pan and then uh, that's where we might have to leave it for today. So I'm gonna flip the motor over and we'll get started on. Okay, so I know I said I wasn't going to be able to get the heads off with just a wrench, but it's actually working. It wasn't insanely hard, actually, somehow, but I was able to get the wrench in here and use this giant pipe as a hammer, and it's it's working. So I got this side off. The pistons don't look terrible. There is a bit of scoring along the top, but that was kind of to be expected. We'll be honing out all of the bores best we can. And here is the head itself, and let me turn it around here so you can see. The bottom side doesn't look too bad or anything. Nothing looks super scorn or anything. We'll be cleaning up and lapping them and then look at these holes. This thing had to have been overheating. It is super filled up and gunked up. There's no way it would have ran without overheating. So it's a really, really good thing we're rebuilding this engine. So let me get the other head off and uh, then we'll move on from there. Alright, now that the engine is completely stripped, next time we are going to get this whole thing stripped down and painted and looking nice and brand new. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Later.